Good morning. Good morning, lovely people. I hope you're doing well on this um, slightly chilly autumn day, um, Tuesday, the 12th of October, 2021. In fact, it is chilly. I'm going to switch the heating on. One second. One second. Um, here we go. There we go. What's that? Yes. So welcome. This is your Yoga Solutions Live, where I um, try and uh offer you solutions to um to uh, your your yoga practice and for me um the <laughs> the same solutions or there's something about the solutions that reflects into life and in fact um being aware of that helps you recognize an actual solution when you're when like say say you say you're having a problem with the posture you know yeah uh, you do dog pose and your shoulders hurt every time you do it and um when i when i see people do do that um one of the things i get them to do is to change the quality of their engagement change the intention behind the thing because um you know, if your if your experience is that your shoulders are tense and your, or your wrists hurt or something when you do dog pose, it's because you're doing it in a way that causes that issue in the first place. I'm not blaming anyone; it's just the way it is. But but um, that will be born, that will be sourced in a way of thinking, and the the way of thinking, for example, with dog pose is that well, when I do dog pose, I feel heavy. I have to push the ground away, and it's hard work for my shoulders. Um, if you change your mind and change your intention, change the way you approach the thing and, you're, and you take away that expectation, you take away that initial um, starting point by shifting how you think, you can have an experience where dog pose is completely light on your shoulders. And uh, it, it, it's, it's um, the way you think about it will shift. Um, and the thing that makes me recognise the uh, a new way of doing things as better uh, apart from it feels better is that there's a there's a sort of paradigmatic quality to quality to the answer as in um it, well it was something to do with the way i was engaging with it it was something to do with the quality of my own touch something to do with um i was the uh, the, the feeling that i was expecting the idea of supporting myself to be hard and when I expect, when I decided that um, what I was looking for was ease, then my experience of dog pose changed. So, you know, the, the way I view life, the, the way I view things uh, affects my experience of those things. And, and, and these broader principles that sort of can be, refer, can be applied to life, um, when practiced, physically and they lead to a, a positive outcome for me that makes the answer a correct answer <laughs> if you said to me for now um you know perhaps that idea won't last forever because it's a, if it becomes another fixed mental impression then it will interfere but anyway i'm, I'm digressing um i had a had a, a suggestion uh, of a posture um from dl who's who i've worked with uh, on a few courses and things um, lovely woman, great teacher uh, herself. Um, she asked. She asked. Well, the uh, the, the comment was happy camel, <laughs> and I know exactly what she means. Um, she means, I th uh, well, I, I think I do. Um, that how to approach camel in a way that leaves your body happy, and uh, so that's a very good line of inquiry alongside a posture. So let's have a have a look at it. <clears throat> I'm going to put my fluffy thing on the over the mat because um, it involves uh, taking weight through your knees for a while. And uh, yes, yeah, so we want it to be comfortable. So let's let's begin. So when I'm when I'm offering solutions, my, more, um, oh, you can't see me. 
Hang on, let's, um, let's ch change the angle of the camera. That should do it. Can you see me, sir? Oh, just about. If I move further back, that'd be better. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm. Yeah, that'll do. So, um, if yeah, when, when I when I start with looking for solutions for things, uh, well, the first line of inquiry is what's the problem? Uh, yeah, that'll do. So. What people experience in just doing the posture, it's basically a back bend on your knees, um, is sort of over compression of the lumbar spine and uh, tension around the neck and shoulders. And it's around weight bearing, you know, it's around carrying your own weight. So that's the problem. That's the initiating problem. And you'll feel that is ridiculous amount of effort in your thighs, pinching in your back, and a feeling of sort of feeling un stranded, uh, unsupported. And the bottom line reason for that is because you're leaning back, right? You're leaning back. And a back bend is not about leaning back. A back bend is about inviting the spine to extend from the upper thoracic. If you lean back, you lean back over the lumbar spine and then the muscles at the front have got the job of carrying your weight. So your thighs, your groins will be too much and you'll be causing a kind of weight bearing distortion of the spine where the whole of the upper half of the body is, is kind of half, uh, is hanging back over the center of the lumbar curve and the whole of the body will quite sensibly get tense to prevent you from damaging yourself. If you understand that it's an, it's an extension of the spine, which is um, where you want the entire curve of the spine to be a single um, C shape, then you don't lean back over your lumbers any more than you hang your head back over your neck, what you do is you try and find a way of getting the thoracic spine between those two secondary curves to join in with those secondary curves. So you end up with a continuous, confluent, balanced um, spine in extension. And the way to think of that is to not lean back, but to allow the spine to travel forwards from the base up. Um, if and so if, if we deal, because uh, I'm trying to explain extension, if you put your hand there, you know, slide up your lumbar spine until you f meet the, the part where the spine starts to reverse into a, sec into a primary curve. And then from above, slide down your neck until you meet the bump at the base of the neck, which is the beginning of the primary curve. And that section of spine between your hands is a bit of spine that needs to reverse and you can't really do that with muscles that um, act on that spine. What you can do though is organize your weight so that the spine travels forwards. So if you play with that you'll see that um, taking your weight forwards from the base up just incrementally fractions of a centimeter each time allows the the thoracic spine to start to join in with the lumbar curve from above it's kind of a harder thing because we are used to lifting with our necks but if you if you try this uh, take take yourself out of extension draw your belly back so that you're not holding yourself up with your back give that to your touch, the knees and the feet. So it's the opposite of extension to start with. But if you uh, create a confluent flexion curve with ideally not withholding your pelvis down, more with a kind of balanced breathing response from within so that the back can relax and the core can join in with 
giving your weight to the ground, then you can take your attention to this space between the back of the head and the shoulders, the wings, and if, you, if they act as wings, if they, which you can do by um, grasping a hand, a wrist, resting the forehead on that hand, pull wide, pull wide to activate your wings, take a breath as if you're catching the breath in the space between the head and the shoulders. And then your job is to kind of empty that weight down to the ground through you, down to the knees, down to the tips of the big toes. So you catch the weight between the head and shoulders. They want to draw away from each other, shoulders wide and back, head resting forwards and down. Okay, take a breath as if it, you're catching it in the space between head and shoulders. Hold it there and then see if you can roll it down your spine from behind as the, as the spine travels forwards from up to down behind you. And uh, allowing the eyes to, the face to be open and the eyes to track a line, you get a sense of how the head coming up is because the spine below the neck travels forwards and down. Um, it's easier to find that in something like dog, in dog pose. If you uh, take your hand, uh, weight through your hands a little, downward touch, the arms are pressing down through the hands, but the shoulders will move up behind the spine as a result of that if you let them, not down your back, but up behind you so that you can rest the curve of the neck so that you can relax your spine with into the action of downward touch, the action of downward touch through your hands. And then with your head relaxed down, open your eyes and look up through the top of your head without lifting it. And that will help you find the way that the, um, the face can sort of lead a movement that gets the spine below the neck to drop through the shoulders, forwards, towards the ground, to cause you to find extension from up to down. Do it with the out breath, it makes it easier. When you haven't got your hands there, you still need your wings to be behind, behind the spine so that the spine can release forwards through those wings. So same thing, if you imagine taking the breath into the space between head and shoulder, a wideness in the shoulders, separation from the body. And then as you release the breath, you can release it down through the spine at the back towards your knees. So the spine from the bump of the base of the neck down tries to give its weight to the knees. And the result is you can extend from up to down. So, starting again. If we want to extend from down to up, we kind of need because we don't want to fold over the uh, sacro-lumbar junction, we kind of need the movement forwards of the spine to happen from, from the sacrum. So how do you do that? Well, you make sure that you're not lifting by getting a sense of dropping into your where the weight is on the knees, but also tips of the big toes help you find the core response. So that instead of filling the, the belly with the breath, the core is involved with being on your knees and feet. So the arriving breath can arrive across the base of the spine rather than all this holding. And then the release of the breath, as you allow the weight of the breath to drop through you to your feet, so through the front of you to your feet, through the back of you to your knees, 
then the base of the spine travels forwards. And yes, there'll be a lot of effort in the thighs, but it's responsive effort that supports you and allows you to move, not looking to hold that, that effort. You're just looking for a simple action where you release the weight down with the breath. Inside of you empties, and the spine travels forwards at the base. Don't lean back over it. You'll miss the point. Then we've got the centre of the lumbar curve. So you can go through the same process, try and relax any holding. See if you can get a centering behind the navel that allows you to drop into your knees to receive the breath into the back of the waist. And then when you, and the big toes are there to help you find that core responsiveness. You can breathe by dropping into your ground. The spine will be relaxed. And then when you release the breath, what's in front is given to the feet. What's behind spine is given to the knees. So the base of the spine travels forwards. Sorry about that. The uh, base of the spine travels forwards, as does the spine behind the navel, but you're not folding over it. And that action should travel up to the thoracic lumbar junction. Patience. <laughs> because now we need to deal with this next area. And that's the solar plexus, the lower half of the ribcage. Once again, make sure you're not lifting by dropping to your knees to receive the breath centered in your solar plexus. That should help the core of the body within the solar plexus to kind of uh, empty as you give some weight to the big toes. By the way, it shouldn't hurt. If it hurts, you're too heavy. Okay. So the stuff in front of you is given to the touch behind you. And the spine behind you is given to the space in front of you because you've got your knees there. And you, 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 when you release from the base up, get the sacrum, traveling forwards, followed by the lumbar spine, followed by the, sac the um, lumbar thoracic junction. If you then decide to hang back, you're in trouble. So only as far as the release of the breath allows the spine to release forwards. And the way, the way of measuring your weight, if it's too much on the big toes, you're too heavy. Okay, if there's nothing on the big toes, you have no, no stability. So you basically try and keep a steady base. And every time you decide to release the breath down, Everything in front wants to relax. Well, it won't be relaxed, it'll be working. But it wants to drop into, into a sense of support, which you'll get from the back of the base. And the spine at the back wants to travel forwards so that you can extend from the ground up. Now, if that comes up as far as the heart, then we've got the next area to deal with. So the heart is in between the lungs. Can you drop into your knees? Drop into your feet to receive the breath across the heart. Wings might need to get out of the way. And then when you release the breath, you want the chest at the front to be given to the ground behind you. And you want the spine behind the heart to travel forwards. And if you've allowed all these uh, grounding spaces to continue to rest back towards the spine and down towards the contact behind you, then that contact will propel you, the spine itself, forwards, even though you're resting and not lifting. So if you've got behind the heart now, that'll be centered over your base, and hopefully it won't be, there won't be any pressure on the lumbar spine because the core is not um, falling forwards and down. The core is emptying back and connecting to your ground. So there'd be no problems with that. Should still be a happy camel. But we've now got the problem of the neck and the throat. So, neck and throat. 
how can this space at the front of the throat be given to the ground behind you? How can the spine beneath the neck and throat travel forwards? So a relationship to the space above you in your wings, behind you in your wings, a relationship to the space in front of you in your face will give you a throat. Okay. It'll be hard work to start with. But when you've got a sense of the breath in the throat between the heart and the, and the head, then if you can allow it to drop through the throat to your base behind you, then the spine beneath that gets a chance to be motivated forwards whoops, <laughs> by arriving on the base at the back. And the, and the feet will send you forwards, send the spine forwards. If the throat closes, you end up carrying the weight of the head. So you start, it's a bit of work, face forwards, wings back, take a breath, into that space between the throat and the chest, and then when the chest releases away from the throat, the spine behind that, gets to release forwards. Now I've caught the weight of my head because I, I know it's going to be a problem. So I've caught the weight of the head with my hands. There's a threatening pull on the base of the spine. So I'm just going to revisit how to drop from behind the navel. And then how to drop from behind the pubis so the sacrum can travel forwards. Now I've lost the space in my throat, so throat forward, uh, face forwards, wings back, take a breath, and then from the throat I can release into my base, allowing the spine to travel forwards. Now I've got the weight of the head, so can I find a way of receiving the breath from above directly into the head and catching it? Can I organize that so that when I release the weight of that breath in my head to the ground, the front can be given to the back. The back is sent forwards to the space in front of me by my base. And if every single chakra, if you like, has a grounded relationship. It won't be in the business of carrying your weight. I still haven't got it quite my head. So I still haven't quite got it in the top of the chest and the spine beneath it. There it is. So when the whole of the spine is um, released forwards because I release the breath and give weight to my base. My feet catch some of it and then send it forwards. If because I arrive on my base to breathe, the breath supports, cushions me from behind because my core doesn't have to let go of the ground to breathe. Then when I let go into the center of that, the feeling of dropping directly through the heart. And if I'm centered there, the spine above it and the head can feel light in space. The wings can fly. If I'm centered there, with no complication in the spine below it. Then I can drop my base away from me as everything above the heart flies. Oh. Well, that made me happy. <laughs> I hope it worked for you, CL. DL, sorry, DL, DL Cisco. 
I would um, just take this into dog pose so that I can find a way of releasing the spine into a flexion state by giving same deal space within wants to find support from the base so knees and feet so that when I um, let go the spine behind me the spine behind the heart can be given to the ground and then everything either side of that gets to feel light that'll do so um, yeah I hope you enjoyed that I uh, hope it was useful uh, please, please feel free to share it around Facebook for as long as I leave it up uh, um, it's between a few days and a couple of weeks depending on my admin skills <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah but then I put it on the website for silver members uh, well all, all my premium members um, this weekend coming what, what's going on I've got one of my regular um, Saturday morning workshop celebration of the body things and uh, if you turn up to that then you can ask a, a question directly and uh, I share some ideas I, I share something ways of approaching it that will give you a, a brand new experience so uh, you know if you've got something you want to work out and come and join me for next Saturday's workshop it's not up on the website yet I'll be doing that today and then on Sunday I'm I'm gonna uh, carry on with my um, sacred breath foundation course um, uh, the, 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 I've got a, f a few people that are coming for the whole thing as a, as a foundation course but you can drop in day by day and e each each Sunday that I do this is that there are intense workshops three and a half hours uh, with a break in the middle and a QA and a after that if you, if you want to hang around um, yeah very intense workshops uh, you'd think that the, the breath is uh, this uh well, p p people don't, don't quite understand how intense breathwork can be. It's not about the intensity of effort. It's about the intensity of experience. And it takes um, deep, deep attention to be able to um, make fundamental, find, discover fundamental relationships between the breath and support as you do things and that's the the point of it um, the, and the sacred breath foundation workshops are uh, individually dealing with how you relate to the world beneath you around you above you how you relate from those things to um, within uh, so your inner world how your inner world relates to the world about you and then how these things can be resolved through the breath and its release and it's uh, it's a journey it's a journey but a any any one of those subjects work as a standalone kind of exploration that will fundamentally shift your practice and possibly your life as well it, it does that for me so uh, that's on sunday uh, both of those things I, I haven't got either of them up on the website yet i'm a bit i'm, I'm rather slow with my admin um i've got life to get on with um, so um, i don't always get around to doing the right thing but um uh, that'll be bookable some point this week and um, other than that i shall see you same time same place next week much love to you bye now